You're going to be keeping your job as president of the California Game and Fishing Commission. I mean, hundreds of sportsmen and women really rallied in support of you. And proof again, their voices and your voice can make a difference. Actually, it's more like thousands. Thousands. Okay. Well, that's even better. Yeah. The pushback uh, that the legislature uh, got uh, was overwhelming. And by the way, as, and God knows I appreciate the sporting community in a big way, but uh, they got it from the general public as well uh, in a big way. And Democrats as well as Republicans, uh, even environmentalists, uh, uh, pretty left-wing guys were uh, chiming in saying, hey, this is ridiculous. And so it they just got way more blowback than they ever dreamed about. Mm -hmm. so well, and I think the big concern, because you look at the claims that these animal rights groups uh, that led by the Humane Society were making about a hunt you were on in Idaho, and, and so many people and, and people who follow this issue are writing there's a much broader issue here. This wasn't just about a hunt you were on in Idaho. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, it is a lot bigger issue. The threat that they see of me being in there has been pretty interesting. And so needless to say, uh, I've been drilling down trying to understand why are they, why are they so scared of, of me. Uh, you know, I get that the hardcore left wing, uh, what I call enviro terrorists, uh, see me as some type of threat. But uh, other than them, you know, I think most people would say I've been a a pretty consistent, pretty fair-minded, uh, pretty balanced commissioner. And, uh, but that hardcore enviro-terrorist group, they, they don't like that. They, they want everybody to agree with their uh, crazy agenda, and, and I don't do that. So we've got uh, issues in front of us. This is uh, round one. Um, uh, fortunately, uh, uh, both branches of the California legislature saw... Uh, the error in the assembly's way. You had 40 people, by the way, sign a letter. That's much different than a vote. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think once they really started to understand that the Humane Society had got them all jacked up with um, not really all the issues here and what was really at stake, a lot of them backed off. So You say round one. What do you mean by that? Someone sent me an email. I've, I've used this line a couple times before. I thought it was pretty cute said, you know, they acted like you'd killed the last unicorn. And uh, th this was much ado about nothing whipped up by the Humane Society. And so the legislature's backed off. That's the bottom line. We've got this uh, idiot uh, assemblyman at, down in San Diego who's going to come up with some uh, rules and regulations for ethics for the commission. And I'm all good with that, by the way. God love him for doing it. Of course, he's one of the in my opinion, someone who's got the lowest ethical standards in the whole assembly. But the bigger issues are what's really going on behind the scenes. What happens in Sacramento, almost never, uh, what you see is, is really not the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of diversionary tactics, a lot of uh, hide-and-seek, and, seek and uh, this is the same issue here uh, in, in a much bigger way. And so I'm putting together a, a little plan and in due time, uh, be happy to share it with you and everybody else candidly about what's really going on. And uh, we'll blow the, blow the top off of this thing and expose uh, what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll be ready I'm to not, hear it. <laughs> I'm not going to sit back and, and let them uh, destroy uh, the resources in California that are there for the enjoyment of all of us. Mm -hmm. That means the sportsmen as well as the non-sporting public. Uh, they have a vision that it's just for their uh, very tight, narrow vision, but that's not reality, and that's not what the law is, and that's not really how we should govern. Mm -hmm. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push that agenda pretty hard. But it really does show you the kind of money and determination these groups have to try to put people like you who rely on science, not fiction, they want to put you out of a job, and they want to put an end to hunting and fishing. I mean, that's right. what they want to do. They're the most devious people I've ever met in my life. Uh, they, they will sit there and say, oh, my God, we have all this science, but it's junk science. Many, by the way, I, I, this always needs to be said. There are instances where there's legitimacy to concerns that they raise. But almost every meeting, not quite every, but almost every meeting, one of these 
uh, echo terror, enviro terrorist groups, brings forth a petition for us to list some species as endangered. Sometimes I actually vote for it because the science is there and it's legitimate. But many times I don't because it's, there is no science for it. Well, what's going on really? We just had an instance come up where we had um, a thing called the blackback woodpecker. And there's not very many of them. There never have been. And so this comes before us as, you know, with some one of these uh, enviro terrorist outfits and, and says that it's endangered and we need to list it uh, uh, for candidacy, uh, potentially to be uh, listed ultimately as endangered, with absolutely no, zero real science. But the real agenda is to stop the logging industry there. Yeah. That's what's really going on. And so if they can get this thing as endangered, they can shut down the logging industry. If you shut down the logging industry and it's endangered in there pretty soon, then they can't have any hunting in that area because the gunfire is going to scare the woodpecker. or Who the heck knows what they come up with? So it's this never-ending process that's not really about the, image, the issues that we see in front of us, but what's the end game that they're trying to hide. Absolutely. If these groups had their way, we wouldn't be hunting, we wouldn't be fishing, and we wouldn't be helping with wildlife management. Well, you know what? That's a great point. These guys, the, what I call the enviro terrorists, they don't spend one penny on um, conservation. Uh, they are uh, conservationists in name only. What they are are lawsuit machines, and that's their business model with the sole intent of getting large settlements so that they can keep perpetuating the process. Yep. And so that's the game that's played mm -hmm. on a regular basis. And so it's offensive to me when I hear them say what great conservationists they are, when I say, well, you're not out there really doing any stream re rehabilitation. You're not out there really doing any uh, plantings uh, uh, for uh, nesting birds. You're, you're not doing any of those things. All you do are lawsuits. And... Uh, it's, it just troubles me. And when you have a majority of the commission who are beholden to that group, what do you think is going to start happening? They're going to settle with them all the time and give them even more money to continue the craziness. Yeah. And so without me in the mix, who fight, you know, I fight that kind of stuff, they're just going to go hog wild. And they know that, and so they're desperate to get, get to that position.